Hello? How are you guys doing? Can you guys hear me? Every time I have to ask the same thing. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Oh man. Yeah, right, Albert. Okay. Let's just start by saying hi Labelle, hi Daniel, hi Julio, hi Vox Guitar, hi Alan, how are you? And hi Albert, hi Alan, Andy, Andy Hostock, all right, hi Connor. Where are you from, Connor? Uh, hi Pooh, <laughs> uh, is it a year or, uh, yeah, it's, it's, been a, it's been a fortnight, it's been, a, it's been two weeks. Hi Jonah Sue. Okay, good. All you all you guys can hear me. All you can hear me. <laughs> Albert, you you went back to China. Oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in case y'all don't know that uh, the COVID situation has kind of like uh, um, uh, became a little bit worse off because we have like a total of twenty four infection. I mean, today we have like twenty four local infection. So, it's because of a ward in a hospital, right? And that whole floor, there was a whole lot of people who got infected because of the foreign workers that comes in. Uh, we in Singapore, we need foreign workers, so we we have workers from India, from Philippines, from Indonesia. So, um, as you all know, the situation in India is really bad because of the Indian variant, and I guess some of them came over here and. Um, some of them are returning to work, and some are probably new workers. But we have stopped all our all workers from coming in from India uh, since like three, four weeks ago. But then you yeah, had the residues. Uh, so there was a whole lot of infection, and there was some infection in certain uh, in places like the airport, where these workers come in and out. Are uh, yeah. So it, it just take a, a a turn for uh, you know not the worst of worst, you know because. Uh, we're talking about like fifty percent of the population in Singapore has been has been vaccinated, fully vaccinated. I could be wrong. It's wrong that 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 that, uh, that number. So uh, we, I'm not really that worried, but uh, you know, we're just trying to be socially conscious of the fact that there are people who are not vaccinated. So uh, the government has announced a clamp down this evening, uh, supposedly to be start uh, to to start on Sunday, where. I mean, we had like eight people. We had like you, we are allowed eight people to to dine together, to come together, but now uh, it kind of went down to five as of last week. So in this Sunday, we're gonna go down to two. So we're back to <laughs> almost square one. So there's only two person allowed to uh, to be together. So if 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 I'm uh, having a party at home, I can only allow two people to come in, and that's it. So, but being Singaporeans, we are kind of used to this, but there will be hiccups, there will be people who are not used to it, and uh, yeah, we're going to see how it happens. Yep. Oh, hey, Connor, you're from Ireland. Good. Good. Welcome. Jeff Vaconcellos. Hmm. Where are you from, Jeff? Or they just said, oh, stay at home until June. Oh, wow. From Portugal. Oh, cool. The UK is getting variants, uh, infection from the Indian variants too. Yeah. So all this is happening, and at the same time, I'm 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 hearing news from the states, from CNN, that CDC in, in the states has announced that if you are fully vaccinated, you can, you don't have to wear a mask when you're going outside and inside. Now, personally, I think that was a, that that was uh, well. That's my that's my opinion anyway. But who cares, right? But I think it's a wrong decision. Our uh, Singapore, we have a lot of people wearing, going around. In fact, everyone go, goes around has mask on, and still we get affected. Even in the hospital, when 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 this um, this outbreak came came to fruition, was because this this ward in the hospital. And you know, if, if we go into a hospital, we would we would just put on masks. That's a no-brainer. And still, people get infected, but they're not like are uh, in a death or life or death situation because I believe that once you get vaccinated, you are uh, you know the COVID nineteen doesn't have a uh, immediate threat to your health. You know, so but 
still the infection is there. So for for the states, you know, to have that, you know, but you know, I I just think it's it's too too soon, too early, yeah, to 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 go to that extreme. In any case, you guys in the states, please take care of yourself because uh, there's going to be people who is who has not been vaccinated going around. And saying that they're vaccinated and just taking off the mask. I, I don't understand what's this this thing about the mask. I know it's a bit uncomfortable, but I, I just don't know this. I just can't wrap my head around it. <laughs> anyway, I just hope you guys stay safe. You know, you know, I care for you guys. I, I really do care for y'all. Uh, even though we are strangers, some of us haven't met before. We haven't even spoken before, except for this live stream. But I, I still care for you guys. So you know. Just, just be wise, you know. Be wise and look at the situation around you and you know, act accordingly. Yes, Pooh, you're right. I'm wondering if Steve, I do a journey back tour. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. So uh, Albert, sadly, I wasn't able to get in touch with Wayne to fix my guitar before I left. I have to find some local luthier to handle my guitar now. Oh, that's cool. I'm sure that uh, the the Chinese luthier in China are pretty good too. So. I'm sure they can handle stuff. All right, so just a little bit of update. Uh, I've been taking a break. Uh, it's been a good uh, break um, so far. It's it's almost coming to two weeks now, uh, but I managed to spend some time just uh, not sitting in front of the computer and and you know and doing. I, I miss playing though. I I do miss it a lot. So that's why I came up with the songs that I did. Uh, but I, I think it's a good break for me to, um, to just stop doing uh, videos every day and kind of like get my life back a little bit together. Although I would prefer to, to exercise a lot more, but you know, the weather is like crazy this, this couple of months. Uh, it's been raining every now and then and uh, I didn't have a chance to go out as much as I want to. Uh, further to the fact, you know, the, uh, yeah, I just, I just uh, need to get some stuff done. You know, and um, ate a lot of food. <laughs> if you guys uh, are followers of mine in, in Facebook, you probably or in, in Instagram, you probably know some of the pictures that I post of food. <laughs> I've been eating a lot, and um, I just can't wait for this stream to finish because I'm really hungry right now. And my wife, my wife Dora, uh, she just uh, uh, what, what, she, what she what what did she whip up today? She whipped up pop chop. Oh, my favorite okay so our pop chart is a bit different from the variants that you guys have in, in, in the UK or in the States so we have pop chop which is like breaded you know and then it's like um, bake or fried depending on what you want to do and it's all crispy on the outside juicy on the inside and then she prepare a, a special sauce uh, that has peas my favorite carrots my favorite potatoes my favorite onions my favorite and this had a stew going and what I do is that I will put a little bit of rice with a pop chop all cut up and with oh man just talking about it just made me hungry <laughs> okay so, so so this is gonna be my supper later on after this show I can't wait for it you know I just love her pop chops her pop chops are just the best alright so uh, Albert, oh, you should wear Googles, not only masks when going. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, I don't go to the hospital, so. Yeah, because I think you're right. Probably that's that's how the, the thing got, in, you know, and got transferred. Mm. So, in any case, uh, if, you, if you guys don't know, uh, me and my wife, Dora, we just celebrated our 32nd, 32nd year. Our anniversary but 32 years we officially tied a knot uh, yeah for 32 years but I, I knew her way back then so our relationship spans somewhere like 34 maybe even more 35 years yeah we got we got, we, we kind of been together for 35 years or more mm. so how have you guys been uh, Ellen how are you in, in England and Jeff in Portugal, Albert, I know you are in, uh, in in China. And how are you, Pooh? How are you doing? And Fernando, Fernando, you're from Portugal, right? So both of you are from Portugal. Cool. Hmm. 
Paolo 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 Tisi Ha Gracias Gracias Hi Scooter Thank you How you doing Scooter Thank you Alan Thank you so much It's it's all a blur you know it's like being married to this lovely woman for 32 years or more it's all a blur like you know I, I it just it just struck me today when I was having my I was having dinner with a couple of my friends and just and I go like where did all the years go you know <laughs> it, it's just just like that you know with the kids and everything you know so now I'm looking at my kids they're all grown up but where did the years go you know this is crazy Oh, good there, Jeff. Good, good. Thank you, Albert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good, Scooter. Good to hear that. It's a blur, yeah? It's a blur. Anyway. I'm going to start doing videos again next week. But tonight I have three guitars here, uh, which I haven't opened yet. So you're just gonna watch live. They just sent it like today. Was it today? This afternoon. So I haven't opened this this up yet, and I, I believe these are like ESP guitars. Yeah, it's supposed to be another one, which is a real a real beauty. But well, apparently the guitar. Uh, someone was interested in that guitar, so they're gonna view it on Sunday. And then that's why Jeanette didn't send it to me, which I, which I'm totally fine with it because uh, uh, if someone's gonna buy it, yeah, fine, you know. So it, it, I'll be happy for that. Uh, but we'll see. If the guitar is not sold on Sunday, then probably I'll, I'll have a chance to review it later on. But that it's a beauty, you know. And the guitar is not cheap. It's, it costs like fourteen thousand Singapore. All right, so. Any case, uh, I have three guitars here, so I'm gonna review them. I'm not gonna review them. I'm gonna like sneak peek to you guys, and just sneak up to you guys, and let you guys take a gander <laughs> in about half an hour or so from now. Yeah. So I'm still waiting for the um, Moore. Moore are uh, GE 300, the full one. Yeah, the 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 I showed you guys uh, the GE 300 on the last live stream without the uh, expression pedal, which I thought I wouldn't want to review that. I would want to review the one with the expression pedal, so the full version. And uh, it's coming in. Uh, I have no idea when they're coming in, so don't scratch them. <laughs> sure hope not. I don't want to scratch it. Like. 16,000. There was another one that's cost 16,000, right? So the other one I was supposed to have today was 14,000. It didn't come, so it's okay. So, my question to you guys um, Irregardless of the fact whether that guitar is well made or not, or what brand that guitar is from, would you pay over 10 grand for a guitar? That's my question to you guys. So you guys take your time and answer it. Would you guys pay, irregardless of the brand, irregardless of the material, you know, or whatever it is, would you guys pay 10, over 10,000 uh, US for a guitar? No? <laughs> Scooter. You're pretty fast. No, okay. Scooter says no. How about the rest of you guys? No way. Vox says no way. <laughs> Alan, no guitar is worth 10 grand. <laughs> Alright, so Jeff, you have other priorities? Cool. Heck no, okay. Jonesu, no, I haven't heard the song yet, so yeah. 
I'll try. I'll try to to do. If I was making money, yes. <laughs> Anyone else? So the general consensus is no. Okay. Unfortunately, no. But if I could, yes. All right. So we are talking about uh, being pragmatic, being being uh, real, because we are all working people, and there's no way that we can afford ten grand. But there are people out there who who does that, you know. And um, what there are, that's for collectors, not players. Exactly, scooter, you nail it on the head. That that are, those are for collectors. But there there were there were one time when um, guys were uh, like becoming guitar snobs and, and, and you know looking like you know they would own like guitars like six seven thousand dollars or or five thousand dollars, and they would look down at people with with cheaper guitars as Squire or Epiphone. And that used to be a thing uh, many years back. But I guess uh, with better made and uh, lower price and better made guitars, this trend has come, has somehow been eradicated. So nowadays people are more aware of the many brands that are in the market today that are affordable and yet of a certain quality. I'm not talking about the best quality, but of a certain quality. Albert, uh, the most expensive guitar brand according to what I know is a black machine from UK which costs up to 10 grand. <coughs> Hi Albert, Hi, how are you? <coughs> but that's overpriced in your opinion too. Yes. So, uh, coming back to what I just said, so there are guitars today that are uh, not overpriced, they are really well uh, priced, affordable. And, and and they're they're well made, you know. And we're not talking about exotic woods like Wenge or you know even like a guitar from Harley Benton features roasted maple neck, stainless steel frets, right? Now I've been reviewing guitars for all this time, and I've come to the general consensus that these guitars are, well, they are affordable and they're worth getting because if. If, if say for example you you buy a guitar from Harley Benton or from Sire or from uh, what Sujie guitar and or even from uh, the brand that I, I reviewed Barkus you know cheap guitars like you know two hundred thousand two hundred dollars you know and, and you can get pretty good sound with it or the Corona guitars um, they're good you know they're, they're affordable guitars um, but Unless you're talking about guitars, is about uh, in Singapore uh, currency about five hundred over dollars, which is like three hundred over US or four hundred US, uh, which is from Harley Benton. And we're talking about the Fusion Pro lines. Those are really well made guitars. You know, those are like really they stand out a little bit more for me because they are really well made guitar. They 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 are um, of a quality of a certain quality, and even the pickups are are fine. They, the tremolo system that they use, the the Wilkinson, they are fine. But then you have the lower ones uh, below that, and those I find uh, are really wanting in many in many cases. Like you know, the pickups might not sound as good, uh, the some of the hardware are not as as as, as uh, lasting uh, or durable as you know as the others, and and this I find are in excess of of, of thousands. Like you know, you, the guitars like this are flooding the market. And, and people will buy them because they're cheap, they're affordable, and then they would like uh, change pickups, you know, do modifications, and, and, and do all stuff. But to tell you seriously, after after all the mods that they have done, you know, the guitars will probably cost a, a, a pretty sum, you know. Like I, I demonstrated that with my uh, Harley Benton um, Black Paisley. You know, so I bought a guitar and I did a, a couple of, or well, a lot, not just a couple, a whole, a whole lot of parts to it, and I end up paying like almost six hundred, yeah, six hundred Singapore dollars for a guitar that costs about two hundred fifty or two hundred sixty dollars Singapore, and you are presented with a, a more or less a, a, um, a guitar that is. Like you know, black pasty. You know, if you buy one black pasty, every every black pasty Harley Benton will look the same. So you're stuck with the guitar that's more or less gener generic, 
but then you have different set of pickups uh, you may have different hardware different tuners you know, I had locking tuners on it and I, I changed the uh, you know the the, 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 the the volume knob plates and all that so these are all like, kind of like affordable uh, mods but you're presented with a guitar that you know that you can call your own more or less and then I have the other guitars like you know the uh, the GNL guitars uh, or the Schecters, you know. Okay, let's just talk about Schecter because the Schecter uh, price range is not too far off from these uh, so called affordable guitars. You know, Schecters will probably cost you about 1002 uh, Singapore dollars, which is like 800 900 dollars or even a grand uh, US. And they're basically made in Indonesia, they have the roasted maple necks and everything. And these are more or less, uh, we can label them as mid range guitars, right. But I also find that I need to do some mods on this. I bought these Schecter's guitars that I have right now, the Jack Fowler and the Nick Johnston, because I like the pickups on them, and that I will never change. I bought this guitar because of the pickups. But there are certain things that I need to change, like you know, our tuners or, or the tremolo arm or you know, whatever the tremolo system, and that will set you a little bit back more. And it will set you back a couple of hundred dollars, right? And then I. Then we talk about GNL guitars. So I, I bought the GNL uh, uh, Comanche, right? I spent like uh, what it was two grand for a GNL guitar, which comes to about thousand eight US, maybe a bit more. So the GNL guitars are like the Schecter guitars. It features a treble system and everything. But I love the pickups of it. Um, it doesn't have locking tuners, but the tuners work fine. They have the um, the tremolo system that they have, you know, uh, in, on the GNL, the full, the the, the, the fulcrum, the full fulcrum. Now the guitar is stock. <laughs> I didn't even do anything to the, the guitars. There, there's no, uh, there's no modification to the guitars except for a little string tree that I I, I did. I installed a touch string tree. Everything was stock. So I spent like two grand for it, and now I'm thinking like, okay, I spent two grand on this. Uh, how much did I pay for money, Johnston? Okay, so the selling price is about thousand eight, all right, thousand eight. Yeah, sorry, you know, I was wrong. So it's around thousand eight, thousand six, and I need to spend like uh, a couple, of, couple, well, a couple of hundred dollars for the mod. So in the end, it came out to be a little bit more than the GNL. But that's because I wanted to do it because I love Denise Johnston for the sound and for the look. I just want to make it a better guitar. This, this is me, right? So you don't have to do that. You're, you're perfectly fine with the stock uh, channel system if you're happy with it. So what I'm trying to tell you is that sometimes getting a, a, a higher price guitar is, is, is kind of worth it. <laughs> and we're not talking about like 10,000 guitar a ten thousand dollars worth of guitar or, or, or even a seven thousand or six hundred thousand at a PRS you know they're incredibly ridiculously price in my opinion right or the sir you know I would never buy these guitars because I, I don't think they're worth that money so what do you, what do you guys think will you guys buy just a a, 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 a typical fender <coughs> I'm not talking about a custom shop just a typical uh, typical fender strap and then if you like it you're not going to change it you're just going to buy it or a tally caster and just buy it stock and just be happy with it nowadays how many of you my question is how many of you actually do have guitars that are totally stock like how many of you have actually bought like uh, how many of you have bought guitars that you buy from the shop you may pay a couple hundreds or a thousand or a couple of thousand dollars for you and have never modded them I need a show of hands so while you guys are typing in your quest, uh, your answers, I'm going to go through some of the comments. Alright, so uh, Pantheon, how are you Pantheon? What do you think Shatter Guitars compared to Fender? Okay, you're asking a question. Right. I will answer that. Our, uh, player quality, that's good. No, actually Scooter can't answer it for me. Albert, the best guitar you can get for work, not for collection. Or charges far less than 10 grand. I agree. Luis Figura, hi Jonathan, just connected. I'm listening to the conversation. <laughs> Welcome. Daniel, yo. Alright. Scooter, Harley Benton. Alright. Uh, Alan, 
Okay, I prefer Schecter Defender. They are better quality and easier to play. There you go. Vox Guitar 3005 would be by Max. And yep, that would get you a real nice Martin. Okay, we're talking about acoustic. I'm talking about electric. All right, uh, electric guitars, all right? I wish they used polyethylene uh, poly, uh, finish. I'm allergic to whatever finish they use. <laughs> yeah, you told me that. Uh, I saw a PRS for 14 grand at Sweetwater. Yeah, I, I, we see this all the time. Jonas Su, I love my Fusion 2, same as yours. Uh, as, your, as your green one, uh, your review sold me on that. Yeah, I sold that. <laughs> In case y'all don't know, I, I just sold that guitar away. Um, scooter, I have an Epiphone Special P90. I personalized it. I loved it. Uh, it's my main X and I love it. Paid 145 for that. Awesome. Right? That's like, you know, that's awesome. Our uh, Vox, I've seen a, a few Martin listed over 40 grand. Yes, I've seen some of those too. Uh, Jurassic, I need a P90 guitar. Yeah. Albert, I went to David's last Thursday for a Schecter G a C7. Yeah. Non FR, non flight risk, and they say they cost thousand eight. <coughs> they said price in in the pandemic is much higher it's because of the transport uh, charges that these guys charge because it's crazy, you know. Uh, you know the DHL, Federal Express, whatever, they have upped the price. Great, yes, that's right. Uh, scooter, because as far as I know, as far as I, I know, that uh, Davis actually has this pricing really really reasonable you know they, they 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 try to keep the guitar prices down as, as much as possible uh scooter my acoustic is stock mm, too uh vox my vox standard model 24 is totally stock had her since 1980 wow cool all right that that that's that says a whole lot <laughs> right our uh, orient quest stock guy here right cool my prs se has never been modified yet <laughs> <laughs> Alan, uh, uh, in the UK, the Schecter C7 Omen is only 379. Alright, so that's the difference, right? Daniel, uh, I have an Epiphone P90 special. I have not modded. I would say it's the best guitar for $150. Uh, pounds? What? Pounds? Dollars? I've seen. Uh, played fine tuners, are okay, but I do plan on changing your tuners and maybe the pickups. Well, actually, I don't like the idea of modeling a cheap guitar. I would determine exact specs for a custom build. Ah, uh, yeah. Yet, Mase, uh, hi, uh, okay, welcome, welcome, okay. Yeah, so we we have a general consensus that most of you guys would not want to mod a guitar if possible. I did it because I just want to experiment it, and I want to see how far I can I can take it. And I think I some like the um, the Fusion Pro. Uh, I, I took it to the extreme. I changed all three pickups, and those pickups are not cheap. Uh, but I stopped. I stopped there because I didn't want to go anymore. Um, I did a whole lot of mod for my Nick Johnson because I really love the guitar. <laughs> so I, I thought you know I, I don't mind spending that money. But you know, you come to think of it, or the money I spent on the Nick Johnson, I could save up a little bit more and just buy. Uh, and just get a original uh, custom built Nick Johnston from Schecter that the US made and those will set me back like 4000 which is still a whole lot of money so right now I'm 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 left with a guitar that I feel comfortable to play that I really love I'm happy Jack Fowler I'm happy you know uh, the, the 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 mods that I did on it which is considered quite minimal because I just changed the Vega tram on it and that's about it but I'm happy with it you know? so yep uh, okay so uh, <coughs> Daniel I like the 50s Fender Vintera Strat I plan on getting it on C from Green 150 US I may want to try the neck but I've, I've, I feel the G and L PTB circuit will be more preferable yes the passive and um, the passive treble and bass control is that's the reason why I'm a fan. I'm 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 a I'm a long lifetime fan of GNL guitars because of the, the things that the Leo Fender incorporated into the GNL guitars. Like you know the EQ system is like bar none the best. The the, the dual fulcrum uh, tremolo system the best. You know and it, it's just the overall um, 
feel of the guitar like you know even the a set blues boy that i have just playing on it just you know you just kind of know that this is this is lovingly made this is of a quality you know um the uh the Schecter guitars when i when i'm playing them they are really comfortable they're like super comfortable to play but i know that they are mass produced and i kind of know that you know the, the neck is it feels the same because I have to check follow after this Johnston both necks feels the same because they are actually the same neck uh, with different dots and stuff like that both exactly the same because of the dimensions and everything and and you just feel that okay this is a, a mass produced guitar but fine I love it you know and the Jack Fowler sounds so different from the Nick Johnson even though they share the same neck and that's the beauty of Schecter guitars because Schecter's have they, they have a way to make uh, to manufacture guitars that are player friendly they're really player friendly and they are more um, catered to players who, who want a certain feel to it now the GNL has a, a more fan, fenderish kind of feel to it but I, I feel that the GNL guitars are like a bit of a, an improvement over Fender guitars now don't get me wrong I love Fender guitars I, I love a real Fender Strat you know I don't care what year I don't care what make but a real nice Fender Strat guitar in my hand I can tell that you know, I would know that if I want to get that guitar or not. Like well, how I how I felt when I when I was playing and trying out the Fender Japan uh, uh, 50 Strat. So all these guitars all have a certain um, attraction to any one of you out there. So now it comes back again to the price. Like you know, how much would you are willing to come out and fork out? A, how much would you willing to spend on a guitar? So with this COVID nineteen thing, where you are buying stuff online, I'm 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 just imagining that there'll be a lot of people who are returning guitars online, or people who are buying guitars from online and then selling them secondhand, because we don't have a chance to play. You know, the stores, you know, to, to to try it, you know, it's it's more or less a luxury at this at this time period. Um. So it's a bit of a of a, a dilemma in a way because uh, for you guys who are just starting out playing guitars you know you 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 the fact is i wouldn't advise you to buy guitars online i would prefer that you buy guitars on in a shop trying them out seeing whether it fits your hand you know and you know and playing it how does it feel how does it look uh that would be more important you know what do you guys think Okay, so Orion, you 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 rather spend money on your on your on your pedals, right? Cool. My scooter, uh, they're not great guitar, basic blah, 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 blah. Okay, so the hair razor is hell razor is nine. Oh wow, it's, it's roughly the same as thousand eight, <laughs> right? Uh, what is this? Cor Corky cat. Mm hmm. Welcome, Corky. Uh, Baba Guitar uh, came up with a theory. My previous seven string, I feel I could not get it set up correctly. Do you think a fan fret helped with seven string guitar? I have no idea, man. Uh, I haven't played on a seven string guitar. Like I said previously, I have problem playing six strings as it is. And fan fret, you know, just something that I haven't tried yet. I would, I would love to one day. Mm -hmm. uh, Louis Figura, the uh, Sire Larry Cotton Strat style is very good guitar. Excellent, I may say. Cool. I haven't tried one of those yet. Uh, Vox, I'm curious, what's everyone's most expensive guitar? And is it your favorite? Mine is a Gibson Les Paul tribute, and it's crap compared to my Squire VM70 Strat. <laughs> Kian50, hi, how are you? Where are you from, Kian? Uh, Joanna Su, I love a Ventura Fender Strat, because it's in Daphne Blue. Mm. Alright, I agree, shop. That's right, Scooter. Uh, Daniel, I've been saving my beans. The Japanese 50s Fender Strats serve green with the pink. Whoa, caught my eye a few years ago, but I've never seen it anywhere now. Mm -hmm. All right, David Hernandez, I agree. You should try them out in person. That's, that's right. So, um, we, 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 we are so spoiled for choice online because we can just go around Sweetwater and whatever. And just look at all these guitars and we go like wow this this looks nice but we don't know how it feels how it sounds and that's why reviews are there but 
Then again, the reviews like a lot of a lot of subscribers, you know, a lot of guys in the comments say that is you know that I I make every guitar sound that sounds great. Uh, and and that's that's you know I I, I take it I I I know I get it because uh, I'm playing the way that I play but that's the way I play it you know and you you might not play like that you might play better than me and your your perception or tone so it's all about your perception your your perspective you know so your perception or tone might be very different from mine so when you're playing it in the shop you will kind of know whether this guitar uh, suits you or not right? that's what I'm trying to say. Kian fifty, yes. You are from Ireland. Good. I have a couple of friends from Ireland. You know, I, I I love I love doing this YouTube channel because I have friends almost internationally. So great to have you on board, Kian. Uh, Clunky, uh, thank you for the welcome. Hope all is well with you. I managed to catch to uh, to catch you live. Always look ah well. Welcome. I'm glad you could join us. Uh, Jeff, until Kramer came out with the affordable Focus 2000, in, okay. Uh, Albert, uh, John, are you comfortable with longer scale lengths such as uh, 26.5 or 27? No, not really. Uh, I'm actually not too comfortable with too short a scale length too. So my ideal, because I've been playing Strat my whole life, I'm just, I just like the 25.5. You know, it's, it's something that I'm, that I, I've, I've used, you know, that I've, I'm so used to. Alright, get messy. My favorite guitar at this moment is my Duesenberg. Oh, that's nice. Duesenberg. I gotta pronounce it properly. Get messy. Are you okay in Jerusalem? Um, I've, I've. Are, are you not in Jerusalem? Because I've heard about the the rockets and stuff like that. Stay safe, okay, brother. Uh, Kian, I bought a Harley Benton T50 after watching. <laughs> Wait! Oh, nice! Good! Are well, you gonna enjoy the guitar? Yeah. Uh, David, I don't trust buying uh, used. You never know what the other person did to the guitar. I prefer to buy it new. Yeah. Have I bought anything? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I bought I bought my. Um, what you call it? My. Um, good lord. Short term memory loss. My Tokai. My Tokai 335. Yeah. It's not called a 335, it's called ES3 something, but almost like a 335 lookalike. And I bought it second hand. And I was happy because I, what? Because I tried it in the shop. I managed to try it in the shop. So I went to my shop, uh, to a friend's shop, Kelvin, <coughs> and I actually tried it there and then, and, and you know, and he sold it, the guitar to me at a very good bargain. So I bought the guitar. Never regret, still with me. And it's not going anywhere, it's staying here. <laughs> Uh, Louis, it depends on the brand. Okay, you might play better than me. That's funny. Yeah, you you do. Some of you guys will play circles around me, you know. Uh, Daniel, I plan on going to Guitar Center here. Um, uh, where even if I buy new, I would like to. I want to support the local economy. It would be fun to go somewhere beside the grocery stores too. Yes. Uh, Clunky talking about online shopping. I had to return five guitars from a huge online retailer. Over a year-long period, supposed new guitars all had false scratches, and retailers had awful customer care. See, there you go. Uh, unless you guys are like you know time to kill, or, like you know you love going to the post office and, and returning guitars. You know, there are, there are guys who love doing that. You know, <laughs> um, Baba guitars. Have you played the uh, Ibanez? Eight? No, I have not. I have not. I have not played any of the new Ibanez guitar uh, since I started this channel. Right. Uh, my Logifier. Are you interested in metal music too? Just curious. Yes, I love metal music, but I'm not a fan of metal music. I, I like some nice metal music that I hear, but not all of them, you know. Uh, Strandberg. Yes, I love Strandberg guitars. I love the way it look. Haven't have a chance to try it. Uh, Ellen, uh, what about uh, Buffy? <laughs> that's pretty, uh, that's not so, um, discreet. Uh, Albert. It's a bit strange that the majority of people coming to this channel are non-Asians. Why? <laughs> Music is universal, so it's not strange at all. You know, I, 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 I love it. Okay, so you guys are here. So I'm going to shout out one more time. Um, um, if you want to buy me coffee, which I desperately need at this time, um, click the super coupon. What super coupon? Super chat? Super sticker? 
yeah buy me a cup of coffee right? and if you guys are interested in supporting this channel then join the patrons right just join the patrons a couple of you guys are in patrons so i appreciate you guys so since i got that out of the way with my coffee spilling out of the side of my mouth let's continue <laughs> Oh, you're from Germany. I thought you're, you're from. All right. So sorry, Yemisa. I thought you were in Israel. All right. So you're in Germany. You're fine. <laughs> David, thank you for all you share. I'm not. I'm not. In, I'm not. In, I know. I'm not an international star at all. You know, I'm just trying to get by. I'm just a working musician who loves guitars and who loves to talk to people. Clunky, in my opinion, if you're not in the States, you have much less choices in secondhand gear and you also pay much more for gear. Guitar, uh, Europe is way overpriced. You know what? I tend to agree with you on that. Um, because I, I, I've been to some uh, uh, sec uh, well, music stores in the States and they have really nice secondhand stuff. So called uh, loved, well loved guitars or vintage guitars or whatever, you know, but they're really nice, you know. Really nice choice. Uh, Sarijit Rapa, have you used Steinberg U22C or no? I have not. Sorry, can't help you. Uh, Daniel, hard to say what which is worth more. About the same, I think it would have been my Yamaha D105 Classical, but gave that away. Just have a Squire Super a Bullet Strat and the Epiphone P90 Special. Cool. Love it. <laughs> Uh, clunky, yes sir. Last item I had to return was uh, his cock case. I never spent a penny with them since then and never will. Wow. That's bad, huh, Clunky? Yeah, that's, that's kind of bad. Our uh, Vox guitar, favorite strings, brand, and gauge. Well, I have a couple. I have a couple. So I'm a working musician, so I, I, I try to be as pragmatic as I can and budget conscious. So I would get myself, um, the, the strings that I'll buy these days would be the... Uh, uh, D. Arderos and uh, we're talking about the electric guitar strings, right? So I'll buy D. Ardero or Zero Tens. Uh, I will buy them in boxes. So lately I've been uh, procuring GHS guitars because I, I get a, some sort of a discount from City Music which sells them. But these are not exactly my favorite strings, but they are, they are you know, they're usable. They're great strings, you know, and there's nothing bad about them. And the fact that they are vacuum packed is a plus. Well, so are, so are the D. Arderos. The worst ones that I ever used was fenders because they weren't vacuum packed and I would buy like fender bullets a couple years back and they were all rusted. They were all rusty and such and, and it's like dude I mean I'm paying like a premium price for this and they're all rusty they don't, even, they don't even bother to kind of vacuum pack this. I don't know whether they changed the packing but it was it was bad. My favorite strings so far are Ernie Balls. I love Ernie Balls strings, the, uh, the slinkies right. Uh, but I want it in zero tens and any balls uh, strings have I've used them for the longest time so I might just go back to any balls <laughs> um, all right so scooter share the same uh, yeah stinky hybrids yeah Alan, uh, I had the same experience with them. I returned three CST 24s to them. They're all faults and finished defects. Yeah. Lewis, you have a Rev Star. Cool. Ah, that's a great guitar. Yeah, that's a great guitar. Clunky, by the way, Jonathan, have you had a chance to try out a Motu M2 audio interface? I want to get a cheap good uh, to help with nighttime practicing along with vids, with videos. I uh, no, I have not tried the M2, but I uh, I love Motu stuff, Mark of the Unicorn. Uh, my doll is from Mark Unicorn, the ship performer. Um, I've used to have a Mark of the Unicorn uh, interface somewhere here, which I kind of threw it away or gave it away to someone else. Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, they they actually make really good stuff, yeah, and they're not terribly expensive. Yeah, so I I don't think you can go wrong with that. Um. Right now I'm using a Apollo Twin, so uh, yeah, this yeah I don't think you need to, to, to use that, but uh, the the model Unicorn is, is pretty cool, and I love the design of it. You know. uh, but, but, okay, uh, anybody own a famous famous any famous equipment? Mm -hmm. Someone play nines and a halves here. Oh, I used to, yeah, Mister. I, I used to have a I used to use nine and a half, but I give that up. <laughs> Daniel, most of what I see 
it's way overpriced too. Once in a while, I see a good deal. I mostly don't bother looking because it's only a few dollars more. I understand. I understand. But sometimes you get to see, like the Tokai. The Tokai is a, a, a rare find because most people who buy Tokais would not sell them unless they have to. Uh, and for me, it was a good find because there were a lot of people looking at it, but I was the one that just paid the money and go, <laughs> take the guitar and run. And, and, and I regret it. You know, sometimes you end up with a good deal. Right? And you know what I do because I'm a Christian, right? So when I buy the guitar, I got it home, I prayed over it. You know, and, and I just pray over the guitar. And this is not the only f uh, second hand guitar that I had. My Les Paul, uh, my Les Paul, in case you all know, I have a Les Paul uh, classic. Uh, I believe it's 1996. I bought it second hand too, and I also pray over that because the guitar uh, had, it's been used a lot, and there were like scratches on it, but I didn't mind because it, I just love the feel and the sound. You know, so yeah, I bought a guitar for two grand back then. I uh, never regretted it. I still love the guitar to bits, and I had it changed. Uh, pickups changed to Wayne's uh, PFs. Love it, you know. The Aldero in the box, All right, Jeff, my man. Uh, clunky, alabadaba, great pictures, bad scene when real life is not so three times. <laughs> yeah, all right. I uh, like uh, David. I like you to consider checking out the Eastman Jazz Box guitars. Yeah, if I have a chance, because. I I kind of find it hard to procure Eastman guitars over here, right? I only have certain uh, uh, certain. I only have certain sources available, so you know, and it's kind of a shame because I would love to review some of the guitars out there, like what you guys have spoken about, like you know, uh, the Squire. I mean, the Sires and Eastman. You know, I know they make great guitars. Hi Esther, how are you? Hi Gwenta. Uh, but uh, but but, okay. Fred Red, hi Jonathan. Just about to start electric guitar at 54 years old. You're that young. You're too young to to be starting electric guitars. Go play ukulele or something. <laughs> and everything I read about learning is too advanced. How on earth does someone learn? Who is a non-musician? Advice appreciated. Thank you. Well, if if you're gonna start at at at, at uh, electric guitar, you know you have to know. Um, what I advise my students to do is to buy an acoustic guitar too, you know, buy a cheap one, an affordable acoustic guitar, so that you can uh, play a guitar without plugging into an amp anywhere you go, you know, in the living room, in the bedroom, in the toilet, whatever. You, know, you could just start to play chords like C, F, G, and, and try to get fam yourself familiarized with the fretboard and to find it comfortable with the fretboard. And then after playing for a couple of months, if you feel that you want to go ahead and, and procure an electric guitar, then go ahead and do it. So it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna advise you to buy a cheap one. Buy a guitar that you like. Right? The reason why you buy a guitar that you like is so that when you look at a guitar you go like, oh, you know. <laughs> Every time you look at a guitar you cringe. That's not a guitar for you. Every time you look at a guitar and you feel like I wanna pick up this guitar, that's a guitar for you. And all the guitars that is in this room are guitars that I would like I would love to pick up and play. You can never find a guitar here in this room where I don't like. All this guitar in this room, you can place it out. And that's the reason why I have it all in all in cases because I don't see them. <laughs> right? No, that's 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 not the truth. The, the reason why I put them in the gig bag is because to protect them from dust. They're so pretty. Alright. So while getting back again. So one if you decide to buy an electric guitar, buy one that's comfortable for your hands so that you you don't find too much of a effort in playing this. Because most of the time in fact, all the time, electric guitars plays more comfortably than acoustic guitar because the actions are lower, the strings are, you know, the gauges are smaller and not so uh, hard to play. Like, you know, an acoustic guitar, you have a 12, you have 13s. In, a, in an electric guitar, you have ranges from 8 to 10, you know, so choose electric guitar that's comfortable for you. Uh, what you could do is just try to play what you can. You know, I started out that way. So you actually asked the right person. I, I have no formal training. I have no teachers that taught me about theory or stuff like that. I just I have to learn everything from scratch, you know. But note one thing is that I was really young at the time. We we're talking about 18 years old, you know. And I had that 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 uh, that desire to learn. So you know, 
and I, I didn't want to leave things half hanging. I just pursued it all the way, even though my hands hurt like hell. You know, the, the, the fingers hurt like crazy, but I, I persevered. Um, a lot of it has to do with perseverance, in case you don't know by now. So what you do is you get uh, you get yourself familiar with chords and stuff like that. You know, If you don't want to learn theory, which I advise you to learn, because you get a good guitar teacher that teaches you about major scale, you know, about about how to read music if you can. But if you don't want to go through it, fine. Learn how to read chord charts. You know, learn how to read a chart where you know where's a bar. You know, every bar, not the singles bar or the TD bars, but bars. Every bar at four beats. You know, a bar. Learn how to do that. Learn how to kind of like familiarize yourself with that. Learn how to read charts, like chords. I'm not talking about all those notes and stuff like that. Learn how to read the proper chart. And once you get that, you, you can start. If you're in the church. You can start like you know serving in church and just by reading court charts because church you know everybody is like really down to the basic you know most churches that I go they don't read like charts like you know with all the notes they have like lyrics and then the charts and then the, the chords above or sometimes they give you a basic court chart and that's how you start right so learn yourself uh, learn to familiarize yourself with chords and then when you when you, if you want to start playing lines and that and like you know play uh, together with the original uh, song and try to mimic the sound that you can. And if you do not know as people, and you, the best thing is to get a teacher. Right? Get a teacher who can teach you about stuff like that. And that's about uh, the most I can say uh, about this. Right. I hope you get something out of this. All right, Fred. Um, uh, yet he may say, to be honest, I play most of the time Gibson nines. They are rusting, <laughs> but the sound is awesome. <laughs> yeah, right. Just don't cut yourself because you're gonna have you're gonna get a tetanus shot. You're gonna have the tetanus shot for that. <laughs> Esther, you're up late. Why are you up so late? Any case, uh, thank you for the uh, cocky. Thank you for the feedback from the motor. Would love to get an Apollo, but they're a bit too expensive for me. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. All right. So Esther has a Motu M4. Cool. See, there you go. Daniel, do you think neck profiles matter much, or do you think uh, we just get used to playing any neck we practice? Are uh, Yes, to both quest to to both questions, they are important because uh, so some of us have like you know real small hands, so having a neck profile that is uh, comfortable for you, it's a must. Like you know, one thing that you guys got to un get to make clear is that anything that is not comfortable for you, you would not want to do it. Like take for example cycling, right? If I were to buy a bicycle and the Every time I, I, I take a ride on it for like 30 km or 25 km, I come back with a sore back, a sore ass. And that will put you off from riding the next time because you have, in, in the back of your mind, there's this reminder, oh, you're going to get on that bike, you're going to suffer. <laughs> so you, you, you start not to do it, you know. For me, I, I love riding my bike because I, I will spend uh, time on trying to fine-tune my, my seat, my position so that you know uh, the way I'm hunched down over it. I'm comfortable. I can I can do this. I can do this for long distances and yet not suffer a whole lot. You would definitely suffer because you're doing exercises. Same goes with the guitar. If you find uh, if you buy a guitar that is not comfortable for you, like we were talking about, like you're not you're not testing it out in the shop, and you find a neck profile that you thought was okay, but after a while you start to have like pains over here, and then you're stretching too far because your hands are too small. And then you, it's going to put you off from guitar playing because, and that's the reason why a lot of people give up on guitar playing because it hurts too much. Like the old song by Eric Carmen, it hurts too much. Because the calluses, you know, some some can just can't take the pain because, ah, you know, and especially women, except for Esther. Esther is like incredible. She's a great guitar player. But there are a lot of women who just give up playing guitar because, oh, it hurts, you know, and I can't have my nails and stuff like that, right? So. But that doesn't discount for the fact that there are a whole lot of good, great women guitarists like Bonnie Raitt, you know, Larry Bassello, whatever, you know. Oh, but yeah, generally people would, even guys, they would just give up because it just takes too much pain and effort. 
Now, but if you persevere in it, or uh, you you get used to it, you know. And I've seen guys like uh, with short hands or with small hands playing a big profile, like you know, acu- uh, you know, playing like uh, classical guitars, like you know, nylon strings, which are really fat, and they get around it like crazy, you know, because they got used to it. Like what uh, the question. Uh, that uh, Daniel has just posted. You can't get used to it because you're spending a lot of time with it. Um, but my my take is that you need to have a guitar that is comfortable for you so that at the back of your mind, you would know that, oh, it's going to be an enjoyable time with guitar. Like, you know, you, you're going to find, you're going to play for hours and not feel fatigue. But if you have a guitar that, you know, that, you know, after like half an hour of playing, you'll feel like, oh, I got this. And in the back of your mind, you would register that this guitar is just pain and you just stay away from the guitar. So that's my logic. So, so make sure you get a guitar that is perfectly comfortable for you, right? Well, unless you're playing, unless you have a whole lot of years of experience, like, you know, I, I you know, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I have years of experience <laughs> of playing guitar. So you, if you have experiences in playing all sorts of guitars, then fine, because you you kind of like mentally you can't prepare like if I'm playing a, a, a three three five, and I know that 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 Tokai three three five the neck is kind of a bit chunky, I know that I'm I'm prepared for it so I can still play it and still feel comfortable because I'm prepared for it because I played the guitar before, or if I'm playing like the Nick Johnson is like really slim neck some people are not used to playing with slim neck so I I'm comfortable with, it. so there you go, hope you understand what I'm trying to say. David R. Uh, David Horrendous. Uh, yes, I have a famous rented Renegade. It's one of the best guitars made. Oh, nice. Okay, so where were we? Uh, okay. Wow, sorry. Uh, I can't skip a whole lot because I've been talking, yakking away. Um, oh. Wow, quirky! I didn't know that. That's bad. That's really bad. You actually spoke to the owner. Oh man, that's bad. Uh, Stephen Whitney. Hey John. So I'm looking to get a photo multi effects, but I want I want easy and good sound. Any idea? Uh, the new X is good. So is a um, the Moore G three hundred. Yeah, so I know me it's around the same price range, but the new X MG30 is pretty good. Yeah. Our scooter, yes, I did. I mean, I just just mentioned the Tokai. Um, y'all want to see it? You guys have probably seen it before, but uh, seen it before. Oh man, it's down. So this is the. Hokai that I'm talking about that I bought used. Check out the back. See, has a shine. So this is like the uh, Tokai equivalent of a three three five, even though it's model not as a three three five. What is it called? It's called um, good grief. Uh, ES one one O. So the model is ES one one O, but as you can see, it it, it looks like a three three five. So this is like a semi-solid. I love this guitar to bits because the neck is, like I said, is a bit chunky, but it plays really well. Yeah, and I love the pickups. It sounds really nice, nice and warm, creamy. So this is the Tokai that I'm talking about. Okay. I'm hungry. Okay, Alan. Yeah, that's right. I mean. I, I, I really can't stand arrogance of any sort. Like if you are if you're doing a business, you know, then you shouldn't be arrogant. Um, we we had a lot of um, we used to have a lot of retail stores, uh, especially music stores that that are arrogant, you know, and um, I guess that that happens everywhere, you know. And the first time I met um, with arrogance in a shop was in Hong Kong. Uh, you know, people would, you know, the, the guys would come and say, "Do you want to buy this? If you don't want to buy this, don't don't waste time asking a whole lot of questions." That sort of arrogance, you know, and I just can't stand it. But 
things just kind of changed um, after 97. <laughs> so the service overnight became way better than pre-97. In case you all know what's 1997 is the year that China took over Hong Kong. So, where were we? Um, okay. <laughs> Titty bar. <laughs> yep. Sorry. Sorry you got to hear that. I'm um, going to hear from a better seller. I highly recommend, okay, David Horrendous, I highly recommend a Yamaha Pacific R for beginners. Uh, clocky cat, uh, Jonathan. What would you say is the first skill or what key the novice should learn? Major. I have students coming in, um, and all they know is the parentonic skill <laughs> because they've been taught parentonic skills. Because that's what everybody wants to learn. They want to learn the blues. They want to learn rock. So the the the, the, the schools that they went to just just teach pentatonic skill and they come to me just playing pentatonic skill and then when they see me play uh, like the solos that I do and they go like oh that that is so different like you know how do you do this I say just play the major scale do re mi fa so la ti do and right after you mastered and it's 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 about mastering that skill because everybody can play do re mi fa so la ti do but how do you go around uh, translating strings to tr string and, and you know octaves to octaves and how you get familiarized with the whole fretboard is is another thing so playing your major skill on every key is a must and right after that once you start to compose melodies out of the major skill then you might want to think about modes because when you are when you understand modes, then you can have a whole lot of options to do because m modes kind of like uh, for me it's kind of like a game changer for me because it kind of open up my vocabulary a whole lot more so that I can play Dorian if I want to, Mixodanian if I need to, Lydian if I want to, and I can get like different feel to a solo that I normally would play in a major scale. But understanding modes, I can do like you know s different notes and and, and and different variations and notes, and that's how you start, right? So don't get caught up in just uh, pentatonic skill. Learn the major skill. Uh, learn it. Get it. Get yourself familiarized with it. You know how to go from note to note, and understand more on um, chord. Um, uh, what you call that? Our uh, chord shapes. In a chord shape, try to learn a major scale from there. And you know what I'm talking about? Like if you're in a, a certain chord shape, like an A shape or a D shape. Or I, I spoke about this in one of my videos. And learn how to get around the major scale with, with just a chord shape as the anchor. That would be great. Um, well, you wrote down all the advice. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Uh, Albert, if you ask John which electric guitar is the best choice for beginners, I believe it's some Harley Benton Super Strat. <laughs> no, I changed my tune, so to speak. I I will recommend you the Schecter. Yeah, it, it's, it's not that I jump ship or anything. I still love the Harley Bentons, but I find the Schecters are are, are pretty good, uh, um, great uh, beginner guitars. Like I like the Jack Fowler because. Yeah, split calls, the humbuckers, you know, and looks great, plays great. Yeah, I would recommend that. Provided you have a good deal. Uh, where are we? Uh, clock. Oh, okay. Uh, Yeti Mazi, back again. I was outside for a moment because our squirrel's back and I love to live. That's great. RJ Demas, ah, gaga, what, what is that? Hang on, guys. OK. 
okay. Orion, when I play guitar, my neighbor suffers. <laughs> well, so does mine. Uh, Esther, uh, no choice. I drag myself out of sleep to be part of the... Ah, Thank you, Esther. And thank you for the coffee. Thank you so much. Thank you, Esther. Well, you're 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 playing a part too because you're you're like you know contributing to this whole community too. I tried to learn classical guitar featuring huge fretboard and 26.5 inches scale length when I was 12. It got small Asian hands, so every time I play classical, it hurts. Yeah. Uh, if it hurts, I stop and take a break. Uh, then build out the flexibility and cut the cycle. I think I need a soft or okay, cool. Kaki, I want to see big hands. Want to see big hands in a small fretboard? Google how well you can really play. I can't remember the day when you get. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but that's why I finally gave up playing classical. But that experience also inspired me to pick up electric. Okay. Uh. All right. Okay. Holy cats. It's a pretty. Oh, it's pretty. All right. Unfortunately, Brad is the most people's choice. Then. Beautiful Tokai. Thank you. The Tokai is beautiful. May I ask where you pick it up from? Singapore. At a, at a shop uh, that's owned by my friend, Calvin. Right. Don Dickfish. Good evening to you, Don. Scooter, yes. Uh, I guess it's from some Japanese music store. Well, the fact is, uh, Tokai is made in Japan, right? And um, and we have uh, there is a shop in Taiwan or in Taichung, in Taiwan, that imports them from Japan, and that's where I, I believe this guy bought it from the, the previous owner, and then uh, I guess he came over to Singapore, he sold the guitar to Calvin, and, and I bought it from Calvin. So yeah, it has the serial number and everything. So I I kind of tracked it down the history and. That, that's, that's, that's what happens. Alright. Uh, the reason I asked is because I'm a bass player, 25 plus years, and my son wants to learn guitar, so I wasn't sure what to teach him. Don't want to give him bad habits. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, there are a lot of our, our YouTube videos, I guess. Still teaching lessons, so you know you might you might just want to point him over there. Hi, Sakaman. Sachaman, right? Uh, okay. Cool. You guys are just talking to yourself. Or uh, okay. Um, Jeff going to work now. God bless. Yeah. God bless you too, Jeff. Take care. Alright, so it's been more than half an hour. Our, okay, let's break out the new guitars. Uh, just give me a second, I'm going to try to hook up my my digital audio workstation so I can have some sound. Um, let me see now. Give me a second, guys. I'm hungry. I'm looking forward to the pop chop. Like I said, uh, mentioned earlier, I have three guitars here that I'm going to be sneak peeking today. So I have no idea. I'm just as um, ignorant as you guys on what these guitars are. I just know that they are from ESP. Some of them are from ESP. Alright, so I got my doll set up. I'm never disappointed by Japanese engineering other than the Nintendo. <laughs> we just don't mess out of necessarily a bad product. Yeah. Yeah, I had a Nintendo Wii. Uh, my wife is like bugging me to fix it up again because she needs to exercise. But we'll see. Okay, so let's break up the first one. Like I said, I have three guitars. 
nice bag. Oh, these are from ESP. These are really nice gig bags. ESP. Right. I like the quality of this gig bag. Okay, that's what we have here. That's what we have. Alright, so it is like a strap. And this is not from ESP, this is from AdWords. <laughs> okay, this is from AdWords. Uh, they are part of ESP, in case you all don't know. Um, and guess what? These are made in Japan. This is made in Japan. This is an AdWords strap, or a single single double, made in Japan. Alright, so AdWords, like I said, is a part of ESP, a subsidiary of ESP. Uh huh. You have the tremolo arm. Very traditional like arm. Alright. Push. And that's it. Okay, let's hear how it sounds like. Ah, so you has that side for a slot, which is great. Um should I team it? Should, right? Oh, it's a tin. But the bridge is not floated, so... Alright, let's hear where there's a sound in this. Can y'all hear it? Y'all can't hear it? Hold on. See where you guys can hear this. Nothing? No way. Why can't I hear anything? Why, why, why? Why can't I hear anything? I'm supposed to hear something. Oh man. Not supposed to be like this. Uh, just hold on, guys. Let me just figure this out. Universal audio. Do I do this? No. Do I do this? No. Do this? No. Why can't I hear anything from here? What is this? Uh, there's a whole lot of distortion here, so I'm trying to get rid of distortion. Um, that's clean. <laughs> Crank it up. Wait. I didn't get started yet. Nice stretch style. Uh, Zach Blackman, love the content. Thank you, Zach. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the live stream, I mean. <laughs> Float it, no. It's flesh. hear the sound that's coming out from this guitar tell me you can hear this I 
third position. Oh, that's split call too. Ah, that's because of this. Okay, I'll turn this off. This should be okay. Is this better? Guitar is terribly out of tune. That's because it's not been um, properly set up yet. So anyway, you guys have okay. <laughs> so okay, so uh, I'm not gonna do too much with this because we'll leave, well, we'll just leave it for the review. But basically, it's a nice sounding guitar. Yeah, um, kind of liked it. Kind of like the guitar sound.
This is be set up, yeah. Needs to be set up nicely. It should, it should. I think I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think it's really expensive. I think it's quite affordable. Yeah. <laughs> Am I taking requests? No. <laughs> but uh, what's this? What are you guys? Okay, sorry, I missed out a whole lot while I'm playing. Okay, so I love. Uh, oh my good lord, I missed out a whole lot. Um, so, um, okay. Stefano, <coughs> Stefano, uh, Zornino, right? Love the demo, the Verum, uh, Venerum, Gen Ray, thank you. Uh, Daniel speaking of computer trouble, <laughs> yeah. Okay, Stefano, uh, you're oh, thank you, thank you so much. I'm glad you, I'm glad you uh, enjoy the songs that I did. Yeah, uh, Zach, um, your review of the Schecter Super Shredder made me buy one. Oh wow. Okay, okay, Sunshine, yes, we hear Zach, we can hear it. I uh, hear it. Eugene, hey John, greetings from Katong. <laughs> Been listening a lot to Ame Concert in '98. Uh, what you saying? She's gone at her concert. Never knew you came up with that song. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you so much. Uh, Elomir project. Yes, we can hear the sound, but it's supposed to have such a long. Okay, so it's just because the mic was on. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, the, the, the love split call dudes. Okay, um, whatever you play is great. Thank you. You're sounding good now. Cool. Uh, suffering from type, typing the word. <laughs> cute. <laughs> um, uh, no, I'm not taking requests. Okay, sorry. That's the second time I answered this. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, scooter player, brother. Uh, going to is always the drummer is too loud. Yeah, it's all, they're always too loud, you know. <laughs> Backtracking is a bit loud. Crack the X. Hi, Uncle John. Yeah, Zitz. Yeah, I think your dry sound sounds louder than your overall mix with gain. Yes, I've been having problem with that. So, anyway, uh, Conky, uh, but the, 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 the scooter such thing is too loud to drum, in my opinion. Agree. Looking forward to review. Uh, fun with guitars. My scooter, you know, okay, all right. Uh, first guitarist, second drummer. <laughs> cool. First triangle player and second guitar. <laughs> you know, I never had a problem with my drummers in my band before, ever. I get along. Famously well with the drummers. You know who I always have problem with? The keyboard player. Um, I always have problem with my old keyboard player because he would always be the one who's bitching that my guitar is too loud, and I'll be the one who's always bitching that he's too loud. So we were like both alpha males, you know, in the band. So you know, there was one day where I was so angry with him that I was I threw a chair at him. At the break time, it was bad for me. I was young. You know, so. <laughs> okay, so the second guitar. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try the guitars now because it's just taking out too much um, uh, resources from my door. Hope you guys understand. Just look for uh, the guitar review. I think it's better. It's gonna show you. So it's just show and tell, and then and show and play. All right. So next one, I think, is another Atwood's guitar. Is that? Yeah, it is. So this time, why are they sending me the same guitar? This is just another variation of it. It's just white in color. <laughs> it's basically the same guitar as the other one. Just that it's white in color. Nice guitar though. I like the gray behind the neck. It's like, I wonder where this, where is this roasted maple? You can see the slope. I like the way it slopes right. Yeah, basically this is the same guitar as the other one. I don't know why Jeanette sends me. Or maybe I requested for it because I thought I requested for these guitars. Maybe I thought that they are different, but they're not. Basically the same. Alright, so this is the last one, the third one. I don't like the guitars. Ooh! Y'all gonna like this. This is like a Les Paul thing. 
Uh, Edwards too, made in Japan. I like the grain. The back is pretty plain though, you can see the grain of the... I wonder what wood is this? This is like... What do you think? You think this is mahogany? Sure feels heavy like a mahogany. Oh, I love the finish of these guitars. These are made in Japan. So, you know, the workmanship is like, incredible. I really love the workmanship. Like, you know, the thing about the like, Japanese guitars, right? The Japanese make guitars, they're like, they're like, um, really fine, you know, fine workmanship. And it's like, uh, you, you, you know, I think the only, the only, uh, way to describe it is like, you know, some of the utensils that the Japanese have, like, you know, those, they, they look like, plastic acrylic like you know the black ones and they're so like so finely made it reminds me of this even if even the i don't know whether this is polyurethane but sure it's fine it's like real smooth real nice i'm sure it sounds great so if you're looking for a cheaper less paul i don't mind getting this it's pretty nice mm. I'll, I'll be looking for for this to kind of like review this and even as like you know the traditional style tuning packs like you know yeah okay there you have it basically I have two guitars yeah so the white strat and the other strat is basically the same guitars you know so <laughs> sorry about that I thought I wanted to see like three guitars what's that um First guitarist, second drummer, <laughs> cool. First triangle. <laughs> Glad John can take a joke. Alan, I'm um, due to retire soon, so we'll have more time to practice. Hopefully, become a better player. I would never be a great one. Nah, no, don't sell yourself too short, Alan. Aim for being great, and you'll be fine. All right. Yeah, I see. Crocky just said what I was thinking about. Uh, they make guitars like they make sushi. <laughs> yes, sunshine, they do. Uh, what are your comments on the build quality of Japanese versus US make guitar price aside? I love the Japanese make guitar, Eugene. I've always loved Japanese make guitar. Um, we're not talking about the earlier guitars like 60s or 70s because they're quite, yeah, quite shabby. Like you know, some of the guitars that would they used to come out from China or from uh, Indonesia, like, you know, but. After 90, after 1990s, especially during the year 2000, you know, wow, Japanese guitars like they just overtook everybody. Even even the U.S. made models like they look better, play better, sound better, right? But you know, I, I can't actually say it sound better because maybe maybe it's the um, the pickups are the same, right? you know. But they are great. The great guitars, are great value for money. Uh, Yazid, uh, your thoughts on Wayne's PAF? Can't wait to get mine done from him. Was just thinking how it sounds with gain. My current PAF is a muddy on the neck. Oh, you'll love it. You'll love it. Yeah, Wayne's PAF is like something else. It's like you can have a choice of of uh, of this. That's the thing about you know getting your pickups made from Wayne because you can't customize it. You want to have more gain, a little bit more bite. You know, it's how he wants it. You know, and how it looks. Yeah. Uh, Glocky, uh, some of those Japanese guitars from smaller manufacturers that you show on your channel unfortunately are not available in the EU too bad for us because some of them are great most of them are great in fact not all of them are great but you know what you can actually order them here write um, email to Jeanette see what you can work out you know maybe she has a, a I don't know I think it's a delivery that's putting people off so maybe there is a or certain deals that she has with uh, the shippers like you know maybe you can get them you know real cheap uh, I'm talking about the delivery right the delivery of the, of the of the guitars and you know you can just talk to her and email her and see what happens you know all right Yatamaze you have a good one too I'm about to leave too I'm, I'm, I'm about to call it at night you know um, unless you guys got any more questions because my stomach is growling yeah, all I see are like pop chops. Cool, thanks. I purchased it after watching your video review on it. Cool. Yeah. 
Or he makes great pickups, you know. So he, he does really good um, pickups and all that. Greco guitars, never tried that. Uh, they used to be kind of the cheaper side. Yeah, uh, I remember Greco back in the days, and uh, nobody wanted to play in that because it's like, you know. But I don't know about today, maybe they're better made right now, you know. Same thing with Harley Benton guitars, you know. When I mean, it first came out, everybody go, like, whoa, what is guitars are like really bad, you know. Okay, Jeanette from which one of the stores that you review? Jeanette, Jeanette, yeah. So, yeah. She's a great. She's such a wonderful person. A babe. <laughs> uh, Alan, if I was only able to get all the guitars that are so in the Far East. Hi, Liam. Thank you. Now, how will you know it's my anniversary? Did I mention it earlier? Or, or, I, I guess I did, right? So, yep. Again, 32 years of marriage. Me and my wife. Yep. Thank you. So y'all have had me uh, and talk to Janet. Yeah. Sure. I, I, I'm sure she, uh, you know, there are a lot of subscribers from the channel who actually emailed her asking her, like, you know, how much does it take to ship over to wherever they are from. Uh, like I was sharing a uh, uh, um, couple of live stream earlier where uh, there's this one of my subscriber who happens to be a, 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 uh, a ship worker like you know he was traveling with a tanker and he saw my video and he wanted to buy the, that video so when he was stopping by in Singapore he got someone to come over ashore and got the guitars from Jeanette and <laughs> back to the ship that was pretty awesome you know should buy her a guitar <laughs> well she doesn't play I think well, Esther would know. Esther is a good friend of, of Jeanette. Alright, Julio. You take care. Uh, and I hope you read from us at another day. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Hey, guys. Before you go, uh, let me just pray for you guys before we go. Right? Um, I'm, I'm just, like, uh, really glad uh, that uh, you guys are able to join me. Yeah? Uh, tonight. So I just want to pray. I uh, just want to pray uh, a blessing upon all of you, right? Um, so I thank you, Jesus, for tonight. I thank you for my brothers and sisters who are, are here in this uh, live chat or this live stream. Uh, I just pray that Lord that you watch over all of them, that you uh, protect them from any uh, illnesses or anything that uh, that would cause them um, discomfort or pain. Uh, the Lord that you will watch over them in the going in and coming out. The Lord that you will also. Uh, protect them at this uh, pandemic and give them wisdom Lord on how to protect themselves and their families too so be with them Lord in Jesus name I pray Amen alright thank you Scooter thank you Orin yeah it's been 32 years so it's been a great 32 years uh, in fact like I mentioned earlier uh, I think I knew her way before that, you know, uh, I think we got along together like 30, 35 years, been together for 35 years, you know. All right. So take care, you guys, All right, um, be safe, hmm? be safe, and watch your surroundings. So um, don't get carried away with what the CDC just said, uh, just mind your distances and, and not take uh, things to chance, you know? Stefano, it's, it's okay. I, I do that all the time in my live stream. Alright. Alright, so in my mind, it's just uh, eating my pop chop that my wife made. <laughs> so I gotta go. I'm really I'm really hungry, so you guys have a good day, have a good have a great weekend ahead. May God bless you. Alright, take care. Ciao ciao. Bye bye. Bye guys, good night.